Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I am of course Cameron and today we're going to be talking about 10 predecessor tips that I think are going to really help you guys improve. Now there's a lot of tips videos for predecessor. I wanted to make this a little bit more complex so even intermediate and advanced players will still learn something from this. Um, I went ahead and put in timestamps which just means you can skip around and you'll see what each topic is about so you know exactly what all 10 tips are going to be about just a little preview so you can skip around and when I say these are a little bit more advanced tips they're more about how to play the game the play style and like game sense and, and things like that uh, such as like your placement uh, such as understanding your enemies and your your own teammates so it's not going to be basic tips that everybody knows about that you you know from your first predecessor game such as last hitting minions everybody knows you need to last hit minions in order to get gold these are going to be other things that you can think of that are going to help you improve as time goes on improve as in keep these in your mind when you're playing your games and you'll understand how they can incorporate into your game and make you an even better player so the first tip is going to be about hero mastering so there are people who like to be a one trick pony type of player. They play one hero, they master them, they get extremely good with them. That is great. In my opinion, you should at least have like, ideally like three roles that you can play. So if somebody's a mid laner, you can play support, you can play carry, and you'll be just fine because you have at least a hero that you're really good with in three different roles. That's my opinion. Now you guys may be totally different. Maybe you guys are queuing with people 24 7 you're not solo queuing like me because i'm a solo queuer which just means that i go into it with four other randoms on our team that may or may not know what they're doing so i'm always like switching up my role and doing different things so i guess that's my first tip is try to master at least one uh, like two or three more heroes than, than just having one um and it does take a while so just be patient with your with yourself it's like learning the game all over again whenever i picked up and tried a different hero because their kit which is all their abilities are completely different than every single hero so no hero is like identical it's very it takes like 10 games to even you know get pretty comfortable with a new hero so just keep that in mind the next tip we're going to go into is countering um so there's a lot of different ways in which you can counter your enemy um, one of the simplest ways to counter is if you see their team comp because every single pregame you know when you're in queue or not in queue but when you're uh, selecting your heroes you can see what their heroes are you could try to counter right there and maybe you see that they're all squishy maybe put on a tank so that way your team has sustainability throughout the entire match so you're gonna you're gonna select a tanky hero um, because they chose three carries or something stupid. So that's just one way to counter. Another way is going to be, um, are they all assassins? Uh, well, in that case, I'd probably throw in another tank again. Um, are they um, all, you know, using lifesteal? Do they have life-stealing items? Uh, that can be like King's Bane from the carry, or that could also just be the jungle. Maybe the jungle's Countess, who is constantly sustaining yourself with health regen um you could throw something on like tainted guard tainted blade uh tainted scepter or anything that your build can use there's going to be the word tainted and then the item name um those are going to be anti-heal items so that's another way you can counter so just figuring out ways you can counter the enemy is going to help you in the long run let's go into tip number three which is first fang so the first fang tooth isn't all that um, you know, helpful, but when you start piling on two, three fang teeth, especially three fang teeth, you're gonna get plus 8% of a ton of stats. Uh, it's like your damage and uh, all sorts of things. So it's just good to try to you know prioritize if you can first fang, especially if you're a mid lane support or carry, because these people can all help you achieve that uh, fang tooth. If you're a jungler, obviously, you, you know, you're going to want to try to be there to get that first fang tooth. Most people don't even start trying to get it until sometimes around like seven or eight minutes. That's still pretty early, but um, you can get it as early as five minutes. At five minutes is when it spawns in. Um, however, at that point, you would want some help. So 
um, you know, use your communication and say attack Fangtooth if you see an opening, especially if you guys kill the enemy jungler who can't come in then and smite it and take it from you. So uh, that is my first, that, that's it. Well, that's another tip is just try to get that first Fangtooth. Okay, so tip number four is strategic ward placement. Um, a lot of people will just kind of throw out that ward if it's available uh, at just a random opening where where they may be. I'd say if you're spending the most of your time in in lane near your tower, throw that ward right next to your tower so that way you know if an enemy is going to gank you. You know, just be very uh, aware of when those wards are going to be regenerated. Um, and then also be aware that they last about two to three minutes. So if you see it disappear, it's usually when another one is going to be available after the cooldown. Uh, so yeah, just be strategic. When you're a mid laner, usually you'll want to throw it to your left, um, you know, off that little cliff. You'll see, um, you know, you'll be able to reveal your river buff so you can get that every two minutes. So heading into our next tip is going to be regarding mid game and end game. So this kind of like this unex, uh, you know, kind of unspoken rule that in predecessor, when you enter mid game, there's no exact time frame for it, but usually it's it's after at least 10 minutes your team will at least start kind of you know grouping together for team fights and the reason they do this is because if you can eliminate you know like three or four people at a time you pretty much get free towers and therefore you know win a portion of the game the whole thing is is trying to push those lanes to inevitably destroy their core right so usually around 10 to 15 minutes Heroes will start going from other lanes and the jungler will attack as a group, um, whether that is catching somebody off guard in, in their own jungle or that is, you know, just overpowering a lane and just pushing your power through that lane. So basically what I'm saying is mid game and end game prioritize objectives, which is going to be also Fangtooth or Prime. Um, so just be ready to group up is, is basically what I'm, what I'm stating here. Early game, your sole focus is your lane and not getting ganked. Um, that's especially true for, for, you know, all four laners, but even the jungler understands, um, in the first 10 to 15 minutes, you're not going to have your teammates available. You're pretty much soloing versus their solo jungle and trying to pick people off when you can and maybe trying to sneak a fang tooth um, early on with maybe a hero but typically you're going to be um you're going to be on your own and laners as well are on their own for the first 10 to 15 minutes and then they start getting uh grouping together and and you know establishing dominance in the game to try to inevitably take the game so just be aware of that because the mindset is different that you should have for mid game and end game once you get those first like eight levels eight nine ten levels then you need to start using that power that you had from your lane to help uh you know win the game all right so for our next tip we're going to be talking about practicing communications practicing comms this was something personally I didn't really get in the habit of doing until at least like a month or two when I started playing. But you need to start practicing different types of comms, whether that's enemy missing from your lane. Even if you know where they are or have an idea where they are, but you're not sure, you know, ping uh, or just throw a quick calm that your enemy is missing at first it'll seem rigid and kind of difficult and awkward to have to try to find which calm is where but now i know them all secondhand it's like down up left down right left or whatever you know like you get in the habit of knowing exactly where which calm is that you're gonna need to ping um so um, th that's just something I want to tell you to do start practicing it right away in all your games and especially if you're in the carry in the, the carry and support lane especially if you're a support uh, use your calm be right back just make make it a point to let your your duo know that you're not going to be with them whether you're out of mana or health or whatever the reason is so you're backing all right this one is also tied to it but it's pings um, pings work differently than comms. Pings make a ping sound that every hero on your team can hear. Um, and it also makes a like a blinking ripple effect on your minimap so people know exactly where that ping came from. 
Now, pings are used differently because they're for getting quick attention. You know, you get tension right away. Uh, it makes a, a loud sound so people are aware of it. So uh, first off, obviously don't spam pings, but some people do it anyways. It, it can be annoying. I'd say it's okay to do two or three for like imminent danger, heated situations. What if there's a jungle ganking your unexpecting teammate who doesn't know what's what's going on? You ping a few times like, hey, he's, you know, somebody's coming and then you throw a comm, be careful. But first you want to ping so they're like aware and looking at their mini map. Um, you can also use it if you're getting gold buff and your support and your carry's not with you. Ping, um, if you ping objectives, it actually says um you know attack whatever and if you ping your your teammates it says defend whoever um if you ping an enemy it says attack you know that enemy hero so they're also used for quick communications as well but usually people use them just to give um, a teammate a heads up or uh, something like that so there's a whole lot of tips about how to win the game but what if you're also losing a game you can still come back and win any game at any point at any time especially if you make it to late game. So I'm gonna give you tips on if you're losing a game. First thing I wanna tell you is to be patient. They're obviously probably fed, they're probably uh, you know, on some type of orb, they're probably doing a lot of things right. At this point, don't just rush out and just make the same atrocious mistake again and again, staring at a, cool down, a, a countdown timer for you to respawn. Instead, take a step back, Focus on just killing minions, level yourself up. You're gonna you know, be able to gain some levels, get some gold, build some more items. The whole team should be doing this, playing defensive and playing safe if you're losing a game. Then what I want you guys to do if your lanes look good and you're still losing, start grouping up. You should be doing this anyways, but for some reason on losing games, people just kind of die one by one by one by one consistently. And then everybody's in a cooldown timer because they're not all together group up and i promise you you can make some magic happen in a lot of games because what happens late game is your countdown timers start getting up to like something crazy like 100 seconds if you guys just hang on long enough to make it to late game everybody will become basically even meaning everybody's going to be stacked maxed level you're probably going to catch up to their level you're probably going to get most of your items built and you're probably going to be about even as them meaning the only difference you should have theoretically is maybe they have 8% extra power from Fangtooth or maybe an orb but instead you guys will be fully caught up to them so at that point what you should be doing is waiting for an opportunity to team kill them if you can kill their entire team you could win in one team death at any point late game because the timers go up to 100 seconds respawn you knock out an entire team you take an extra inhibitor you blow up the core in 30 seconds and win the game all right so going into our ninth tip is going to be a late game strategy so um there's kind of this assessment you should have late game if the game is still kind of being fought on both ends and you're not really sure if you're going to win you need to make an assessment and say who is their strongest player and this is something I've done that I think is helping my game personally on those 50-50 games. Um, like, just kind of figure out who their their best, uh, you know, gamer is on their team. Whether they're doing the most damage or they're, they're just the most valuable player on their team. And I would say focus them in the team fights within reason. You know, obviously, if they're a backliner... Don't try to go through, you know, the entire team to get to that backliner and pretty much kill yourself before you even start hurting them. But if they're available to attack and it's like a team fight and you could choose who you're going to attack, focus that guy that's that's fucking carrying their team. Focus the guy that's actually putting the, the entire team on his back to win that game from you. Um, because uh, especially if you can tell that to your teammates as well, because I can't tell you how many times there's a tank that's slapping my team and there's just as easily the the carry with 20 kills and one death available with no health and they're attacking the tank. It's like, dude, ignore the tank. The tank isn't killing you, right? The tank is annoying because the tank is right in your face, but the tank isn't killing you. Focus that fucking guy in the back that's doing all the damage and you'll win those fights way quicker especially if you're a mid laner somebody with a huge high burst rate of damage you focus that fucking carry that's melting everybody the game's won it's it's so much easier if you can just focus them um so number 10 is and this is the last tip 
um, it's, and it's a fun one. I wanted to, to give you guys, you know, a tip that I enjoy about this game, and that's going to be experimenting. Uh, experiment with this game. Try different builds. Uh, every once in a while, you know, get creative and think of, you know, how can I use Faye more effectively than just using all damage? What if I made her s sustainable? What if I focused on giving her a ton of health while also decent damage? Um, what if I built a ton of ability haste and put ability haste, you know, geared uh, items in? Um, there's a lot of creativity, and I will tell you this, there's going to be even more very soon because they're implementing six items really soon. So you're going to see a lot of different creative builds. Um, so I'd say just, just kind of have fun with it. That's probably my favorite part about this game is that you can pick a hero, but you can build them in so many nuanced different directions and uh and i think it makes for really fun uh you know situations unfold because you're you're creating somebody who's like extremely unique especially for whatever type of game you're in so experiment with it and you'll actually learn a lot more about the game as well because you'll understand how items can counter other items as well so that's what i was talking about with like the second tip i gave you guys is countering you can learn a lot about how to counter people just by trying some different builds and different items and stuff but yeah um those are the tips and predecessor this game is a crap ton of fun it's like a chess match man this this game really is like a big game of chess and uh the more you play it the more you understand how you can do better and also you should you guys should be watching some of your gameplays back if you really want to improve because you'll find so many ways that you could have improved in fights where you've died is like oh I wasn't aware of such and such and those can be used as ways to improve your your games in the future but as always guys it's been your boy cameron i took up enough of your time i hope you guys learned something new and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out for now i'm vibrating <laughs>